Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. And right now we'll be looking at what the national dailies are saying this morning. Joining us to review the papers is Chris Kende Wandu. He's a member of the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators in the UK and he's joining us here from Lagos State. Good morning, Mr. Chris. Thank you for joining us. Well, if you want me to buy it, I'm just like this. I'm coming to you live from I'm coming to you live from Cote d'Ivoire. Oh, uh, yeah. fantastic! Where well, I'm here to support the Super Eagles uh, in their campaign uh, for us. Come mm. together. Uh, so oh, that's today. amazing. That's good. That's yeah, good. At least you're there cheering so, them on, which mm -hmm. is great. Yeah, you, do, and, uh, you should be reporting live from them. Mm. Mm. Yes, as a journalist, let me quickly give you. A small update, uh, okay. live update for Abidjan, uh, which is good for the station. Um, the Nigerian, yes, Nigerian won yesterday and have qualified for the next round of the competition. Um, but the big uh, issue here now is the loss by Cote d'Ivoire 4 0 to the uh, Guinea yesterday, and that in itself has brought so much uh, discomfort to the people of Ivory Coast, Cote d'Ivoire. Everywhere you go, there is so much discomfort that um, most people believe that if this team does not qualify for the next round then there's going to be a lot of apathy within the um, the competition and um, so i'm uh, waiting to see whether they will qualify as one of the best losers then probably is a big loss also to giant four times uh, four times champion ghana and the um, report we're getting from here uh, from the region is that um, after that loss yesterday which uh, ghana crashed out this, uh, the players were attacked. They are very close. We are attacked by parents, um, I believe, them, Ghanaian supporters. And that's the report now. Um, but it's not looking good. It's a game. Everybody should just take it as a game. We win some, we lose some. But the good news is that Nigeria is qualified. And we hope that we continue to improve on our last match yesterday and going to the second round. So I think we're going to the papers. All right, fantastic. Well, it's good that Nigeria is winning. We're always going to be cheering the Super Eagles um, wherever they go. But yes, let's bring it back to Nigeria. So we're going to be looking at what the papers are saying today. And the first one is The Guardian. Um, the major headline here says, Six years after electrification project, Vasity's hospitals in darkness as federal government's $105 million power project flops. What do you think about that? Yes, well, you know, we've been talking about the issue of uh, uh, electricity mm -hmm. uh, and um, <laughs> the, 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 the issues surrounding it. Not just the hospital, uh, um, uh, as, um, as the university's hospitals, but across Nigeria, I said last week that mm -hmm. the greatest problem we're having is that of power. You know, I was talking about the issue of SMEs. And I said that SM will do something about our SMEs. Uh, and the issue of power, then we are going over. Uh, we're talking of, um, you know, let me put it to you, let me also say this, that it's quite, you will know how abysmal the Naira is uh, to the dollar until you, until you know how abysmal it is to, to, the, um, to the, the dollar to the Naira, until I came into Abidjan about three, four days ago. You won't believe that the, uh, the, the Code of uh, Sefer is to about two times the strength over the Naira. Wow. The Naira, uh, uh, I believe, is uh, exchanging for about 1,350 or thereabouts as of um, yesterday or thereabouts. But the uh, Agro Agri Agri Sefer is just about 660 to a dollar to the mass. 660. That is uh, so you, 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 that, that shows you how bad the Nigerian economy is. I will continue to call ourselves the giant of Africa. We're back to the issue of power. Uh, until we do something about power, then we are going nowhere. We've been talking about this issue of power for years and years and years. I remember vividly that the last regime of uh, President Muhammad Buhari, with all the promises he's made, he couldn't add a single uh, kilowatt uh, or megawatts, whichever it is, to the uh, our power. Is that we still have between 4,000 to 5,000. 5, and that was what he meant. It's even, it was even worse before he left. And this was a, a president that promised that every year that was going to inject 10,000 megawatts into this uh, that, which means that if you have done that within each uh, year period, would have been within 80,000 now, but nothing. Just the same thing uh, with the, uh, 
with um, petroleum and refineries, you saw the abysmal performance of that government. They said that they're going to revive the refinery, they're going to build a new one. No single one was, but neither was, was anyone. Right? So that is what we are about. If we continue to do what we are doing and not be able to change course, then we are going to run into problems. But I believe that if we're able to get the issue of power right, then that in itself will kickstart the economy as it's where, and uh, we take it up from there. But if we don't do that, whatever we are doing is just like playing it to a beautiful man in the dark. We are the only one blanking that she doesn't worry. Hmm. Okay, um, well, uh, we have this um, story here, which is just looking like a reverse story, but it's not a reverse story. Crisis looms as sacked plateau lawmakers resume. I don't know if you've seen that. What do, what do you think about that? Lawmakers yeah, that will yeah. resume. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, don't that. I don't know whether we have the opportunity of living to that stream. As I saw your earlier um, um, issue and discussion about the combat it on the river state. But let me put it in context that there are now two combat it from Federal High Court in Abuja. There are two, not just one. The first one reversed the, uh, the budget passed by the um, by by the six um, six member. Um, River State um, um, House of Assembly. Then, but they said that just after some hours after that, as a vote by Justice Jebu Abu Masik, um, also of the Federal High Court, um, asking for um, the status quo uh, to remain. That suit was filed by six elders uh, in River State. So what we are having now is a, a, a complete judgment. What it means that status quo remains is that as far as the, that second judge is consigned. The only recognized um, the members of the status of assembly are those six. And the law, I mean, law graduates, and the law, when they start having this kind of complicity judgment, then it becomes, it becomes a big issue and it, be, it becomes a problem. And I don't know where they're going to go by this, but those, those, uh, those six elders that fight that we were in support of the appointed six um, or six or five uh, lawmakers of which the the, the former speaker or artist speaker to be designed. They don't put a, a river state in a park mine. But, and I totally agree with you, uh, some of your takes on the activities of um, the river state governor. Some of the members of the, uh, the stakeholders, those that are, by the, are not, they are by the case at the federal high court, are not happy with their action and activities of um, the governor of Ubarra as it were best. And let us not be too in judgment. It may be political. We don't know what the man, the man has up his sleeves. Don't forget that he has not gone through his uh, the judgment, his Supreme Court um, judgment or case. Uh, the man may be taking his time. That once he gets that, then he will not become a man of death. For now, that is what it is. And for for my benefits, uh, it's also quite unfortunate because if you look at the judgment of the Supreme Court on the case involving the governor of Black two states, where he said most of the issues raised by the appellate court and the, the tribunal as well as well the court of appeal were more or less we are more or less pre-election matters which should not be dealt by the by the um, tribunal as well as the court of appeal. That that they ought not to have um, a, given the kind of judgment they gave. But the problem there is that that issue ends at the court of appeal. Every legislative um, um, petition, election petition, ends at the court of appeal, not the Supreme Court. And that is why, so they're going by, yes, they have a right, but they cannot. The law is quite clear, irrespective of whatever they say. Um, the law is clear. The decision has been taken. They can only wait. Um, or maybe go back to the Supreme Court. Even they get to the Supreme Court, that's not the Supreme Court. But what we need to do now, what this tells us that we need to tinker with our electoral uh, act or once again we should not leave election matters especially at the legislative act to end at the court of appeal because it's so obvious that these judges of the court of appeal or justice as they were are not compromising their stake and it is quite unfortunate it's quite unfortunate what happened in black two states um, but that is what it is that is what it was and they cannot take the right to their hands okay all right um let's talk about security for a bit now I'm going to take about three stories, two from The Guardian and one from The Punch. But let's start with The Punch. So the major headline here says kidnapping epidemic. Most abductions in Abuja 
others are not reported and that's said by the victim's family the writers here says okota gains notoriety as kidnapping hotspots in lagos and why kidnap cases are under reported ai private investigators so we're seeing we're seeing this epidemic of kidnapping a lot of people um are getting kidnapped in abuja and now it's moving over to lagos so we don't even know what our security is like here but let's move back to the guardian and it says um Kidnapping, Tinubu's okay, Tinubu okay's emergency procurement of tracking equipment and constabularies how not to reform practice state policing for better security. What's your take on this? Because this is kind of like a holistic view. We're seeing the rise of kidnapping. Um, President Tinubu now okay's emergency procurement for them to be able to track these people, their phones or whatever mobile devices they're using. And then the constabularies are saying, you know, they should practice state policing for better security. I want to hear your thoughts on this. I'll stick with punch uh, reports. Uh, let's stick with punch. Uh, and that has to do with the kidnapping is underreported. And, and that is a fact. And um, yes, based on what you are saying that. Uh, kidnapping is moving to Lagos. Kidnapping is not moving to Lagos. Kidnapping is already in Lagos. And a lot of people are being kidnapped, especially within the Okota, as it, uh, as it were. Uh, Agopa last way is a no go area in the night, and so many other parts of it. Whereas this news that broke uh, on social media, um, that uh, kidnapping, a lot of kidnapping is going on along the Bagada yes. Express. Yes, I'm sure you read that. Yes, I read that um, as well. The, yes, um, the, uh, the spokesman of the Lagos State Police Command. Uh, Benjamin they came out with uh, a, a report yesterday, with a statement yesterday the evening. That yes, in as much as people were alluding that to a statement to come from the police, that they did come from the police, but that the police is doing something, everything humanly possible to, to try to make sure that those areas are. It is a kidnapping spree. It, it, especially, you need to go and read the story of um, the father of, uh, of Navena, the father of the six. Um, Maybe the girls, ladies that were adopted in uh, in Abuja, and uh, yeah. had the, one of the daughters was killed. The eldest one. Statement by the uh, by one of the ministers that do not pay ransom to kidnappers and daughters, and that doesn't make any sense to me. What effort is the government making? What effort did they make to be able to rescue most of Nigerians? For I will tell you that for everyone kidnapping or to that. But, uh, over 10 have gone unreported, and that's the fact. How many are we? Did, how many is the media going to report? How many are we going to report? Those are the issues as it's where. Then, back to the issue of um, surveillance uh, gadgets. And, uh, the question you ask yourself, you forgot that a few months back, about a year, the federal government introduced the need. They asked us to re register our, uh, uh, our names and also SIM card. And the basic element reason for that is that they're going to use it, that they're going to use it to track. Um, uh, kidnapping and the rest of what happened to that registration? The Nigeria registered. How come that these same re registered things are being used by these kidnappers and abductors to um, to ferry Nigerians to ask for ransom? And I don't believe in that. I continue to say that what we need to do is invest more on intel. We don't do that. Our security is not just putting, putting the boot, uh, the boot on, on ground, buying equipment, buying. Uh, uh, whatever, um, um, AK-47, buy all sorts of all other sorts of equipment. If you don't have the necessary intelligence to be able to work with, then you are as good as now. Because intelligence will be able to tell, we should be able to try to prevent this from happening, rather than reactory. And that has been the problem with our security agencies. So I should be asking the president that he should equip the security agencies more to, do, to, to get involved with intelligence Intel as it's clear rather. Because I've said it time and time ago, the problem we're having is that of trust deficit. There's a total trust deficit between the citizenry and the security agencies. Because a situation where they, these people live among us for good next sake. Most of know most of these kidnappers. Then they, they cannot report to security agencies because they believe that when they do, those uh, reports will be traced back by the to them and they put them in the, the line of harm. That doesn't happen in advanced countries. It doesn't, because in advanced countries, you see that a, a very old woman sitting by the window and then um, just doing as if she's picking her nails and she just saw some strange page passing through. And you don't know what she's doing. The next thing she has called them um, security agencies. And within two minutes, you see the police just coming and an asking question and asking, Who are you? Can you identify yourself? And then nobody will be able to trace that or back to that very good man. That is what we need to do. So we should be able to build 
uh, trust between the agencies so Nigerians can volunteer information willingly without necessarily this information being traced back to them. Then I've talked about uh, Intel. Then, then the equipment, yes, I agree, the people are in security agencies as well. But the security agencies are you are talking about. I didn't have to say what that are kidnapping people. Yes, I because mean, in, in, in Casina, right, there's another yes. one. In Casina, yeah, terrorists in military uniform yeah. abduct 30 persons in Casina. Don't go far. You are talking of Casina. You just read that in one of the, in your, this, in the how some policemen kidnap somebody in River State. They yes. Think, Casina is fine. Kidnap somebody in the uh, River State and at least that dollars from the person. But kudos to um, the uh, Commissioner of Police in River State, Tunji uh, Disu. Who is doing a good job in River State? You know, this. If you know him very well, you know that he's a no nonsense uh, police commissioner. He was the former um, uh, the commander of RRS in Lagos. Remember him uh, during the days of RRS. Mm. He was the commander of RRS before he moved to Abuja to be the commander of RRS. He took over from embattled Abakari as the commander of RRS. So he had now been posted to River State. Good job. But there are instances like there are no security agencies. Not only do they kidnap. Or optimal. So they then even hire us their weapons to kill us hmm. and get returns. So, so is it, I think what the president, the president are giving the security um, chiefs, the chief of army staff, the chief of naval staff, the chief of air staff, as well as the inspector the general of police, the marching order to be able to need this issue of kidnapping and other banditry in the port. Whether they'll be able to do that is left to be seen. And if they're not going to do their job, then they should be kicked out and really Nigeria should be picked to do the job. Okay, so how about your thoughts on state policing? That's the one you didn't touch on. The state policing has always been a policy. Uh, you know, from time, we've always said that there is need for state policing. Yeah. We believe that the security architecture as it is presently is not working. If you go to other parts of the world, each local, what you call councils, or local government area, have their own security outfits. Mm. They do. They do. And that is for effectiveness. But, and so the, 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 the interesting part of it is that this current APC government, before it took over from uh, PDP, talked about restructuring. They were all for restructuring. Yeah. And policy is part of restructuring. But even when they took over power in 2015, everything, everybody just kept quiet. I said that. So we need to structure not just only our security, but other aspects of our, um, of, of, our, of our lives. We are talking about the issue of the security. We are talking about the issue of uh, uh, um, uh, distribution, equal distribution, the distribution of wealth. We are talking about states having taken charge of various minerals within their uh, within their confines to be able to uh, take care of that and pay something back. This infiltration that we are on is too big and too large. Everything is to Abuja. That is not how it works. So, but good enough that this of a level of liberalisation is that is some local policing. That is why you see something like Amoteku yeah, within the Southwest, and they are doing very well. Um, the Southeast with the Bubabu, I don't know how that uh, went because the governors went to sleep and decided not to do what they ought to do. But I totally agree with you that state policing uh, is necessary. Our police force, presently as it were, cannot be too much. We don't have barely less than 500,000 policemen marshalling and securing over 200 million Nigerians. What we are having now is total aberration from what the constitution, by the confine of the constitution as amended, the primary responsibility to internal security lies with the police, not the Navy, not the Navy, not the Air Force. Their own primary responsibility are given to them by 1999 constitution as amended is against external aggression. So if you bring in the, in the army, the, the Air Force are into the internal security, that is an aberration. That is just because the police have not been able to effectively do their jobs. What is the problem? Are we supposed to recruit more? Are we supposed to get more equipment there? But you also ask yourself, what is the recruitment the parameter we use in recruiting our police? Most of have come to realize that even most of those that are recruited are criminals. Most of them, some of them, I don't know what most, some of them are criminals. So if you now are, if you now get these people within the system, that also becomes a big challenge uh, for us. So, if we need to have a holistic look at our security architectures, but the fact remains that, that this government should not take its eye off the ball. They, have been, they may be trying in some other areas. The issue of security, security is very serious, it is all being held again. Nigerians are being kidnapped and being killed in their drones. You cannot move out after a certain period. Now, the, the problem is nice. They're not even kidnapping you on the road. 
they are coming to houses, especially like what is happening in Abuja. They go to estates, house to house, to kidnap people. And if there's a high level of insecurity in Abuja, then you can, you can imagine what is happening in other parts of the world. Because Abuja is the seat of power. And that in itself negates humanity because you see our president going out seeking for foreign investment. The VP went to Dakar seeking for foreign investment. Who would want to invest in a country where there is, is a high level of insecurity? It's not possible. Okay, um, as we wind up, uh, let's just look at this final one. We go to the Daily Independent. Uh, we have a story that maybe we'll leave for another day. Federal government to deploy education tax into student loan scheme. Fine, okay. But we have this story that has been going on for some time. Northern senators protest relocation of CBN uh, fan offices uh, to Lagos. They allege lopsided lopsidedness in allocation of resources in the 2024 budget. Our concern here is um, we've been talking for a few days now how uh, CBN has said that because of security, because of congestion or decongestion as the case may be, they need to move some of the offices and staff to Lagos, the same Lagos that we are talking about, um, overpopulation and all that. And um, FAN also uh, is also trying to remove its offices and some people are already complaining. What is your take generally on the movement of some of these uh, uh, departments of, of, of of some of the parasitals of the federal government to Lagos? Let me just ask a quick question. Let's a, a, a quick one. Why we want to move an MPA? For example, I'm just giving an example. Why we want to move an MPA to Abuja? Nigerian Post Authority. Is there any port in Abuja? Mm -hmm. That is a fundamental question you have to ask yourself. Where do you have the port is Wari, Lagos, um, Portacourt, Calabar? There's no single port in Abuja. So uh, I'm just using that. So if the CBN and fine for whatever it is, uh, for good reasons, believe that the, this, uh, from this department should be more functional uh, if we are located in Lagos, all well and good. For, for, for instance, the traffic, the movement, the traffic, air traffic in Nigeria, over 60% comes from Lagos, not Abuja. Over close to 60% come from Lagos. So if you have the headquarters, why do you want to have the headquarters um, in, in Abuja? So. of Abuja. You need to go to Abuja and know how much it will cost in, in, in Abuja, especially within the city. I lived in Abuja for several years. I know how expensive it is. Most of these workers are squatting in Abuja. Some of them are living far away from the city. Coming to work becomes a problem for them. So if they're having an accommodation problem, then be it. If there are, there's accommodation in, in, in Lagos, why not? It's the same CBA. In these days of technology, you don't need anybody to sit in one particular place to work. Most works are done online. That is what it's supposed to be. It's only in Nigeria that we pay so much emphasis that coming to office every month. There are some people that are making billions and billions of naira. They don't step into offices. They stay in the four walls of their room um, on their computer during COVID period. How many people went to work? So I totally agree with you. The same thing with CBN. They're saying they're having a... CBN has a very, very big office at Tinubu. That's where they started from. That's where we used to have several headquarters of certain banks. So if the governor of certain banks that we need to decentralize some of these departments, let some go to Lagos where we have accommodation, where we have um, uh, we have uh, bigger offices and the rest of them. Oh, well, this shouldn't be political. I saw a statement issued by ACF saying that, oh, no, no, this is not possible. When most of these things were being moved uh, during the Gwari regime, what did they say? Did they say anything? It does not matter. Let them leave those in charge to be able to run this. All us is for them to be run, to be this, uh, these offices to be run effectively, these corporations to be run effectively. Whether they are moving them to Kaduna, Kano, or wherever. If they think that they will be more efficient and they have the capacity to, to do what they are doing, wherever they are moving, all well and good. Everybody must not be in Abuja. This is a federation. Everything must not be in Abuja. I'm not even talking of level, uh, level of insecurity. Stay back to insecurity. I'm just waiting to see the, 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 the statement, or what do they call it now, the advisory the statement that will come from most of these embassies, the US, Canada, UK and the rest of them in the next few days with what is happening in Abuja. And that in itself to me is where the greatest challenge is. Not this movement of offices. Anybody can move anywhere. Uh, it is the right of, uh, of the, uh, the head of this parastatus. They must have done their had some kind of investigation, done some kind of in-house um, inquiries and some kind of medicine. And they, they arrive at all. So uh, totally, if the peace is okay, all well and good. We don't need to right. kill ourselves over
Whatever else is a concern, let's leave it for another day uh, because there are so many things that have come out of this. Timing and all that is a part of it. But we'd like to wish you safety where you are because um, the host country losing this game and not going even into the round of 16, there may be problems here and there. We pray that you'll be safe where you are and you represent our country the way you can. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Abidjan is a very beautiful city. There is no security. I walk from the, from home, the home. stadium. Let, let yes. us not be jackpot for you. Come home. <laughs> we are starting to sing with people. Come back. Yes, you can do so. Come back. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right. Have a wonderful put your head. Thank you very much, Chris. Thank you. Uh, that was Chris Kainde Wandu, member of the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators in the UK. He was talking to us from Abidjan, a, the capital of uh, Ivory Coast. We'll take a break now and return with our first hot topic. Stay with us. <laughs>